Hi folks, let's walk through how to machine a dovetail in Fusion 360. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. We'll start by roughing out the area we can get to with a traditional end mill. 2D adaptive clearing. We'll use a quarter inch three fluid end mill. And under the geometry tab, hold down the Alt key and we'll pick this edge. And while we're still holding down the Alt key, we'll pick this edge. And we're picking these edges because all we're doing now is roughing out the area that we can get to with a traditional straight end mill. So we don't want to say pick the inside corners of our dovetail because doing that would cause Fusion to create a tool path that's gonna machine right through that dovetail that we actually want to keep on our part. If we didn't hold down the Alt key and we click this edge, it would have selected this whole periphery. And you'll see we'll actually get some tool paths that occur where we really don't want them. But selecting these top two edges creates one problem that we'll have to fix, which is that Fusion puts that tool path on the top of our part and we want it down here. Why does it do that? If we edit this operation and go under heights, the bottom height is the lowest height at which the toolpath is going to do its work. And the bottom height right now is set to selected contours. Those selected contours are the contours that we picked here in the geometry. So Fusion's doing exactly what it thinks we want it to do, which is to machine all the way down to effectively the top of our part. So easy fix, change it to selection, and we'll pick this bottom face. Click OK. We've got a toolpath. We simulate that. Turn our stock on. You can see that now. Roughs out that center slot. If we make the stock transparent, we can see we have not machined away the dovetail. Perfect. Creating the toolpath for the dovetail, quite simple. 2D contour. We'll pick our dovetail cutter. We'll come back to that in a second. We'll pick our inside corner edge on each side of the part. Click OK. We should be good to go. Let's take a look. We'll simulate. We'll wrap it through our roughing strategy. And we'll come down here. And we'll see that cutter come in, walk all the way across our part, cutting our dovetail and we're done, except we've got a couple of problems that we want to fix here. The first is that if we toggle our model on and off right here, see how we've got a gouge on each end? That's because we need to extend our lead in. So let's go to 2D Contour, Edit. A couple different ways that we can do this. Under Geometry, Tangential Extension Distance, a mouthful of a term. What that's going to do though is just extend that selected contour out in each direction. So if we add say half an inch, it'll run a toolpath on this line as if it were a half inch longer on each side. The other thing that we could do is change our lead in because you'll see right now it's going straight down, then it's taking a right hand turn and then it's taking another turn. So we don't really need all that movement for this toolpath. All of that is in the last tab, linking. The lead in and transition, most of this is okay, except we're going to change the lead in sweep angle to zero degrees instead of 90 degrees. And that's going to cause the tool to come straight into our part. We could also extend the lead in, that's the green area right there, which will have a similar effect of the tangential extension distance by increasing the linear lead in distance. We'll make it something quite long here, like 0.75 inches, just to demonstrate its effect like so. Two last things though, let's talk about the tool and let's talk about multiple widths of cut. When we're cutting dovetails, we actually wanna be conscious that we've got a correct tool for the job. I did a quick Google search for a relatively traditional 60 degree dovetail cutter. And we can see it's a three quarter inch diameter and a three eighth inch shank. So to model that tool, we created a dovetail mill infusion. It's actually modeled here as a 30 degree taper angle three quarter inch diameter and a three eighth inch shank. The flute length is really important because if you have an incorrect flute length, it'll just look funny. And the flute length we get from the width of cut, a little bit of a strange terminology here, a five sixteenths, we'd actually even just type the fraction in there. And that gives us the correct tool model. 
Looks like it's eight flutes, so I'll update that while I'm in here. Feeds and speeds are going to very much depend on your machine and the material, but I would generally run these at a slower surface feet, we'll say 100, and we'll keep the feed per tooth at a one thousandth of an inch. So do we want to take this in multiple passes? Hit I on your keyboard to measure. I'm going to click this point here and that point. I want to know the distance those are in X. So if I check this XYZ delta box here, I can see the delta in X is 0.144 inches. So that's that width of cut. Now again, it's going to be very material and machine specific as to whether you can make this a one width of cut pass, but let's assume we can't. So I'm going to click that once to copy that value to the clipboard. Under 2D contour, edit, passes. Now you could either use roughing passes or finishing passes. I often tend to do multiple finishing passes. Let's say we want to do it in four passes and then I'll paste that value, hit control V and that paste that value that we just copied from our measure and I'll say divided by four and I'll check repeat finishing pass. That's now going to give us one, two, three, four passes plus it's going to do this last pass twice as a skim cut to clean it up. Let's see how that looks. We'll finish our adaptive. We'll come in here We'll take that first dovetail pass, looks good. Second one, third one, fourth one, and a cleanup pass yet again. Looks great, the only thing to keep in mind is cutting with any angled tool, whether it's turning threads on a lathe or a dovetail cutter, each width of cut increases the cutter engagement. So as you saw that first cut, wasn't really cutting very much material really just the tip of that tool. But by the time you get into the third and fourth cut, we've really got a lot more engagement along the sidewall. So that's gonna increase your deflection, may induce chatter, may just be asking more of your cutter or your machine. So just keep that in mind if you've got to either decrease the width of cut or slow down your service footage. Otherwise folks, hope you learned, hope you enjoyed. This Fusion 360 model is available, card here to download it from the NYC CNC website. Take care folks, see you soon.